I had moved into my new house a little over four months ago. If we're speaking bluntly, this house wasn't my first choice, or even my second for that matter. Time was running out on my current lease and I was forced to settle on this location. The house itself wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great either. The main drawback, however, was the location. The house was settled on the edge of the suburbs. Even with GPS, you were forced to navigate a labyrinth of side roads, and you still had a pretty good chance of getting lost. If you followed all the directions closely, you'd be led to a side street, which extended out into a dead end. At the very end of that dead end street was my new house. The back and right side of the house overlooked a mini creek of sorts. It was basically just a drainage area for the city plumbing. Large thickets of shrubs and trees wove themselves together, creating a natural fence around the back side of my house. For the first two weeks upon moving in, everything was great. It felt like that honeymoon phase where everything was new and exciting. Then, on the third week, I woke up one morning and stepped outside to grab the mail. Honestly, I wasn't expecting anything other than junk mail, and for the most part, that's exactly what it was. I fished out the handful of items and brought them inside. As I sipped from my coffee mug, I thumbed through the mail itself. There was a department store catalog addressed to current resident, an automatically approved credit card, a handful of lifetime offers, and a flyer for a new restaurant opening in town. As I looked through each piece of mail, something fell from the pile onto the floor. I glanced down and saw what appeared to be a single piece of paper. Picking it up, I quickly realized that it wasn't paper at all. Well, not exactly. It was a photograph. Like a Polaroid, but different slightly. It didn't have any white edges commonly associated with those. In fact, one side of the photo was jagged, like it had been torn from a machine. I turned the photo over and looked down at it. At first, I couldn't quite make out what it was a photo of. It was grainy and out of focus. It seemed like it had been taken from an odd angle at a distance. However, it was obvious that half of the photo was of the back side of my house. I had no clue what to think. I'd never dealt with something like this before, so I was at a loss. I thought maybe some kids were playing with a toy camera, took a picture and placed it in my mailbox as a joke or prank of some kind. I tossed the photo in the trash and didn't give it a second thought. A week passed and as I was once again out retrieving the mail, I found a new photo placed alongside them. This photo was much clearer than the previous one. I could actually make out distinct details this time. Details which gave me pause. It was a photo of me heading to my car for work early in the morning. As I stared at the image, I realized that whoever had taken the photo was standing at the edge of my house and was peeking around the corner towards the front. I looked up towards the direction of my house and saw nothing but the corner and the thick brush beyond. Feeling slightly nervous, I quickly gathered my thoughts and went back inside. I could feel myself growing more and more concerned as I stared at the image. Someone was clearly messing with me, and I'd be a fool to think otherwise. However, I knew there wasn't much I could do. If I reported this, all they would probably do is search the area and ask me to call if I see anyone suspicious. Another week. Another photo. This one was particularly unsettling. It was a photo of me standing in my kitchen washing dishes. What was unsettling was that it was taken in the evening after I had gotten home from work, and judging from the angle, the photographer was standing in the middle of my front yard. Upon receiving this photo, I reported it to the authorities. They sent out a detective to investigate, but like I had previously thought, there wasn't much he could do. 
He asked me numerous questions about my history, if I had any bad relationships or wronged anyone in the past, but there were none that came to mind. He meandered around the backside of my house and looked through the creek for a few moments before returning. He said there was no sign of anyone out there. Right. Like anyone would hang around while people are searching the area. Like I suspected they would, he told me if I saw anyone to call them, and they would send someone out immediately. Begrudgingly, I thanked them for taking the time, and they left. Shortly after they left, I decided it would be best to take some precautions. I immediately headed to a store in town. I was just going to purchase a can of mace for self-protection, but as I was checking out, I glanced over and saw the brand new state-of-the-art, affordable, tactical self-defense flashlight. I chuckled at the absurdity, but I had yet to actually purchase a flashlight for the house itself, so I figured why not. A week passed, then two, then three. I hadn't received a single photo in the mail during that time. I thought perhaps that whomever it was had spotted the detective and didn't want to risk getting caught, so they backed off. That feeling was short-lived as two weeks ago, I received a new photo. This one was much more disturbing than the last. It was a photo of me asleep in my bed. The picture was taken from outside of the window to my bedroom. Standing outside at the mailbox, I crumpled the photo in my hand and stared at the trees behind my house. I decided then and there that I was going to find out who was doing this to me. I took two weeks off from work to make sure I'd be able to catch whoever this was in the act. So I stayed home and waited. Eventually, a week passed, and during that time, I saw no sign of anyone outside my house. Then, a week ago, something happened. I was sitting in my bedroom reading a book. I'd been forcing myself to stay awake for numerous consecutive nights during that last week and a half, so my exhaustion was getting the better of me. I could feel my eyelids growing heavy, and just before they shut, I thought I heard something outside. It sounded mechanical, like the rhythmic clicks of a camera shuddering. My eyes shot open and I held my breath momentarily. Then I heard it again. The whirring of films and cogs sputtering sounded just on the other side of my window. I grabbed my flashlight and mace from my desk before making a break for my door. I sprinted through the living room of my house and tore open my front door. As quickly as I could, I rounded the outside corner of my house to where my bedroom window was, and I stopped. In the moonlight, I could see it. It was tall and thin, extremely thin. It looked like an unnaturally long skeleton was standing outside my window. It was hunched over facing the glass and yet it was still taller than me. Its bony skeletonoid form was completely black, like its body had been submerged in a tar-like substance. It was hard to discern it from the dark siding on my house. I could feel my throat beginning to dry up as fear was slowly settling in my mind. Then, the creature turned to face me, and I saw its face. In the center of its skull looked like a giant camera lens. It had a long, slit-like mouth bisecting its face underneath. As it turned, the creature made no sounds whatsoever. It was jarring seeing something so large be so quiet. Then, the faint clicking and whirring sound of a camera lens focusing could be heard. In a panic, I brought up my high-powered flashlight and switched it on. The 3000 lumen flashlight pierced the darkness like a hot knife through butter and bathed the creature in a brilliant white light. The creature immediately recoiled, unleashing a hellish screech in pain. As it screamed, I heard the sound of a camera shutter, and I watched as something began to slide out of the creature's mouth. 
The object gently floated towards the ground. As the creature turned and sprinted off, disappearing into the dense brush behind my house. I simply stared in disbelief for a few moments, unable to truly comprehend what I had just witnessed. Once I was finally able to regain my ability to walk again, I slowly moved over to where the object was. I bent down and gently picked it up. It was a photograph. A photograph of a pure white light. It's been nearly a week since that incident, and I'm still struggling to believe what I had experienced was real. If it wasn't for the white photo on my desk as a constant reminder, I might have thought the whole thing was just one big sleep-deprived episode. I have no idea what that creature was, where it came from, or what it even wanted. I haven't been able to get this experience off my mind, as I'm sure none of my family or friends would even believe me if I told them. I just hope I manage to scare the thing off for good, because I'm not sure what I'm going to do if it comes back. Though, as I'm sitting here writing this out, I can't seem to shake the feeling that I'm being watched. And I could have sworn that I heard the faint click of a camera shutter just outside my window.